In today's discussion, we're going to be talking about railguns and the elements of physics at work behind them. In terms of formulas and exact numbers, the most important concepts of basic railguns are shown here. First is the equation for magnetic field strength generated by a wire. Second is the formula for force on a current in a magnetic field. This is known as the Lorentz force. Third is a combination of these two concepts, giving force on the railgun's projectile and showing that it is primarily based on the square of the current running through the projectile. Shown here is a basic railgun design. Note on these computer-aided designs that the projectile completes the connection between the two otherwise separate rails. The sample railgun that will be displayed following this presentation is composed of two rails of aluminum foil connected to a power source and bridged by a small conductive metal rod capped with disc magnets to amplify the forces and make motion more obvious. In this diagram, we see that the projectile itself is completing the circuit of the battery and the rails, although without resistance, this actually borders on a short circuit scenario. This flow of current in a circuit fashion is important for the following magnetism concepts. Using the first right-hand rule of magnetism, we can find the direction of the magnetic fields produced by the rails. Its exact value on Tesla's can be found using the B equals K times I over R formula from the second slide. The right-hand rule states that by pointing the thumb on your right hand in the direction of the flow of conventional current, the flow of current from positive to negative, your fingers will curl in the direction of the magnetic field. Applying this shows a clockwise field around the right rail and a counterclockwise field around the left rail resulting in a net magnetic field pointed upward between the two rails where the projectile will lie. Using the hand rule depicted on the left, or another form of it popularized by McQuaid Jesuit's own Mr. DeBase that is known as the in-your-face disgrace rule, the direction of the Lorentz force based on the directions of current and magnetic field can be determined. On the diagram of the rails, the green axis denotes the magnetic field lines caused by the rails, the red axis denotes the direction of current in the projectile, and the light blue axis denotes the direction of the force. Thus, the projectile will have the Lorentz force applied to it, directed away from the source of current in the railgun until the circuit is broken. Our demonstration railgun consists of two strips of aluminum foil, glued down and smoothed out, which are attached to a power source and a switch, which allows us to open and close the completed circuit. You can see that the rails are on a level surface, so that gravity will not be affecting this experiment in any way. We use a ruler to provide a consistent initial velocity between tests. This initial velocity is needed, because otherwise, the projectile would be stuck to the rails by the magnetic attraction. We will now test our setup with no electricity flowing through the circuit. We take our projectile, which has two magnets, one on either end, which amplifies the effect. Put it on the ramp and allow it to roll off the edge. We can see that it stops because of friction. Now, we'll flip the switch and see what happens. We test that a circuit has been created by using an LED attached to a resistor. And we see that it lights up, and if we turn it around, the other one does. We will allow the projectile to roll down the rails at the same initial velocity as before. Clearly, there is some force being applied to the projectile that allows it to roll further than before by using Newton's second law. This force is the magnetic force generated by the wires. It is also interesting to note that the initial velocity can be provided in either direction.